Hi, I'm Jenny and I'm speaking to you from Life, the Basic Manual. This is clip number two in our series of Living with Anxiety. And in this clip, we're going to discuss basically some of the information that I have found about what happens to the brain and what happens to the body when we're faced with anxiety. Part of my experience was that I needed to find a lot more compassion and a lot more self-love when it came to feelings of anxiety. Because what I often found myself doing was being a little bit too harsh and a little bit too rough with myself. Because I felt ashamed, because I felt embarrassed, and frankly, because I didn't understand what was going on, I looked at this fear, this anxiety, as a problem that I needed to fix. and. What I learned is that it's not necessarily a, a problem and it's not necessarily something that needs fixing. So I looked at every situation that brought me anxiety with this sort of warrior mentality that I needed to put my boots on and, you know, get my shield and my sword and, and move forward, that I needed to put my big girl panties on and feel like I needed to go out into the world and behave and look as what I perceived to be how other people behaved and looked. I often felt like I wasn't enough or there was something wrong with me because it looked like everybody else was managing just fine and I still struggled. And where I felt like that duck on the pond where everything looked smooth on the bottom, my feet were moving around and making all kinds of fuss. And it didn't look like that for other people. And the more I started to investigate this, the more I realized that this is a really common thing that lots of people suffer with. And everybody else feels exactly the way that I feel. And that this wasn't something I needed to be embarrassed about. So I just wanna talk a little bit about the science behind anxiety and a little bit about the brain. Because I find the brain and how the, the brain functions to be incredibly interesting. So through a therapeutic process, I became aware of something called somatic body experience. And the condensed version of that basically means that our body stores memories that we're not necessarily conscious of. So if you've ever found yourself in a place that makes you feel really uneasy, or a person perhaps from your past that makes you feel unsettled, maybe there's a song that you hear, there's different things that come up that you think, I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why I'm uncomfortable. That typically means that your body has stored a memory that's unpleasant that your brain isn't conscious of. So our brain is this incredibly fragile, incredibly complicated piece. And what the brain does is when we have trauma and when we have events that are very difficult for us, our brain actually is not supposed to store that information. It's not just supposed to store those memories. And the reason for that is it does that to keep us safe. It's so that we don't continue reliving a trauma or, um, you know, if you've ever had a, a physical trauma, your brain actually starts to shut down and it stops recording the memory of what that pain feels like. And it's a way that we protect ourselves. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury when it comes to our body. Our nervous system can sometimes act like a keepsake or a lockbox, and it can store those traumas and those memories there. So that's why we have a physical reaction to things when we don't exactly understand why we have them. So this was really clear and really apparent to me when it comes to my fear of flying. I have been afraid to fly my entire life. I remember being eight years old, traveling to Paris, where my family is from, and my parents being in trouble because the people around me thought I was being kidnapped because I was so fearful of getting on the plane. And I can't tell you why that is. I can't put into words to you exactly why it is that I'm so afraid and why I have a physical reaction. And this is something that's affected the quality of my life greatly because I'm someone who loves to travel. I have a wanderlust sense. I love to meet new people and have new experiences. And I limited myself to those experiences where I felt like I could be in control, where I could drive to, where I felt comfortable. And rather than being calm and patient with myself, I just pushed through. So I found myself buying a plane ticket to uh, Colorado 
and I felt anxious buying the ticket, I felt anxious paying for the ticket, and I felt anxious every day from the date I purchased that ticket to the day of the flight. And three days prior to flying, I didn't sleep, I didn't eat, I felt sick to my stomach, I felt uneasy, and I told myself that I needed to get over it and that I needed to knock it off. And I got as far as passing through security and getting on that airplane and sitting in that plane with people crowded around me and hyperventilating. And I don't know what was going on. And although I continued to tell myself that I was a mature, intelligent, educated woman who was capable of managing her life and responsibilities, I didn't actually feel that way. I felt like perhaps I was pretending that I was all of those things and that I was this fundamentally flawed, fearful person. And I want to tell you that I was able to work through it and I flew and had a wonderful trip, but I didn't. Moments before they closed the door to that airplane, I ran off like a crazy person, like the coyote, you know, running for the roadrunner. And I got off the flight and I watched that plane leave with my luggage. And I felt so ashamed. I felt so less than. And through investigating what was really going on for me, I came to learn that when I was a young child, I had been in a flight that had mechanical challenges. That I was in this plane and the wheels wouldn't come down and people screamed and there was talk of death. And although I don't remember this, I discovered talking to people who were on that flight with me that it was something that had happened. And I came to realize that my body had stored this information and that mentally I wasn't aware of it. So this really got me curious and it really got me thinking about what it is that the brain does, how it is that the brain cannot be conscious of something that the body can. And it was through that process that I began to discover just exactly what a somatic body experience means. That there's a physical reaction without the brain needing to be involved at all. And the other thing I thought was really interesting is that this is something that happens to animals. So we talk about a flight or fright or an instinct or a survival mechanism that we have. And in the next clip, we're going to talk a little bit about what is actually happening to the brain and where we think once there was weakness and um, an inability to process information correctly, actually is the complete opposite, that it's a function of a normal, healthy brain. And what is it that we can do with this function? That we know what's happening now and we can be educated about the different functions and the processes of the brain. How does that relate to anxiety? And how does that relate to us getting some relief? So next, you're gonna discover some more information about the brain. We're gonna get a little bit scientific, but not too much. And then finally, we're gonna wrap this up with information about where it is that we can get relief, where we can feel compassionate, and where we can find some tools and some strategies that are available to us at any time we may be feeling this discomfort.